Here at JCR Off-Road, it's obvious we're not huge fans of Turkey Burger. For our RIP Supercharged JKU Project Doghouse, only 100% USDA grade American beef was gonna cut it. So we called James at Adam's Drive Shaft and he sent us these 1350 monsters to put in our JK. We've ran his 1310 drive shafts in our JK projects before and have had no issues with them. But for all this horsepower, and because I drive like a jackass, we chose the Double Royale with cheese, these massive 1350 drive shafts. These things are gonna take anything you can throw at them and they're gonna bolt right into your Jeep in place of the factory shafts. James supplies all the hardware and flanges that you're gonna need, so let's watch as we get these things installed because I wanna burn up some Toyos. We're doing this install on a Jeep that already had Adam's 1310 shafts. If you're removing your factory shafts and flanges, please watch the 1310 video first. So instead of doing this install myself, I figure I'd just pay Shifty McCraigslist. And since he works for a sandwich, it was a no-brainer. The first thing we have to do is remove the front factory pinion flange. Well, the first thing Shifty has to do anyway. Press the new yoke on and put a thin bead of RTV around the pinion nut. What, what are you, why are you making that face? What are you? No, no, don't, don't eat it, don't eat it. Just put it on, come on. There's a crush sleeve under here, so tighten it with the impact just until it stops. Remove the front transfer case yoke or flange and install the new machined one. Put a thin layer of RTV on the nut and install. Since Shifty has no respect for our tools or fear of bodily harm, he's using a small extension so he can wedge in a crowbar and torque the nut. We need to apply a drop of Loctite to the transfer case yoke bolts. Now you can install the front drive shaft. Come on, come on. Hit. Install the front U-joint straps, but don't tighten them too tight or you will crush the caps. Now tighten the bolt at the T-case yoke. In some rare situations, you may have to trim this little tab on the shift linkage bracket. It's easy enough to do with a pair of snips or a body saw. We're running a Terra 60 rear, but the steps are just the same. First, remove the rear pinion yoke. Slide on the new yoke. Yes, Shifty, great, great job. Install some RTV on the washer. Then replace the nut. There's a crush sleeve here as well, so tighten it down until the impact stops. Don't crush the sleeve anymore. Remove the rear transfer case yoke. And slide the new flange on. Add a thin film of RTV to the nut and install. Torque this nut to 150 foot-pounds. Now you can install the new rear drive shaft. This is probably a good place to mention that you really shouldn't hire a mechanic off Craigslist. If you don't want to do this job yourself, try your local four-wheel drive shop. Or if you don't have any other choice, at least institute some sort of screening process. I sure wish we did. Just like the front, make sure when you install these U-bolts that you do not tighten the nuts too tight. It's very easy to crush the caps and the needle bearings underneath. I'm not sure why we're trusting someone that we're paying in a sandwich to get this right. Speaking of trust, hey Shifty, did you Loctite those? Of course you didn't. You're going to have to take them out. You need to apply a drop of Loctite to these bolts. No, a drop? A, that's like $7 in Loctite. Shifty! Jeez. You're only getting a 6 cent sandwich now. 
Once again, if you're going to use a pry bar to hold the drive shaft from spinning, be careful of the seals and the centering ball. Sh shift. What are you? Man, you can't even underpay good help anymore. Just let it down so we can pay you your sandwich and get you out of here. Jeez. Shifty, um, I don't think that you're authorized to drive that since you don't have an insurance. And you should probably just let me... Oh, Brian is going to kill me.